ഹലോ ഒരു വഴി ദിസ് ഇസ് ജിതിൻ പി നാരായണൻ അസിസ്റ്റൻറ് പ്രൊഫസർ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് മെക്കാനിക്കൽ എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് രാജഗിരി സ്കൂൾ ഓഫ് എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ടെക്നോളജി കൊച്ചി സോ ടുഡേ ദിസ് ഐ വിൽ ബി ഡിസ്കസിങ് ഓൺ അ ടോപ്പിക് ടു ഡിഗ്രീസ് ഓഫ് ഫ്രീഡം സിസ്റ്റം ദിസ് ടോപ്പിക് ഇസ് ഇൻക്ലൂഡ് ഇൻ ദ മൊഡ്യൂൾ സിക്സ് ഓഫ് ദ കോഴ്സ് എം ഇ ത്രീ സീറോ ഫോർ ഡയനാമിക്സ് ഓപ്പറേഷണറി ദിസ് കോഴ്സ് ഇസ് ഓഫർഡ് ഫോർ സിക്സ് സെമസ്റ്റർ മെക്കാനിക്കൽ എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് സോ ഇറ്റ്സ് മൂവ് ടു ദ പ്രസൻറ്റേഷൻ A two-degree freedom system is a system which requires two independent coordinates to describe the motion completely. The vibration model of such two-degree freedom system consists of two masses which will have two natural frequencies. These are examples for the two degrees of freedom system, of which the first one actually represents an undamped free vibration system. There is no external force acting on the system. We are initially giving a a displacement x1 on the mass m1 and a displacement x2 on mass m2 and the system starts vibrating since there is no damper it is an undamped vibration free vibration 2 degree freedom system the second one is actually cons- actually consisting of dampers so this is a uh, for uh, this is a damped vibration system and also you can see there is an external force f1t which is acting on mass m1 and f2t which is acting on mass m2 so this is a forced vibration system also so in total we can say this is a damped uh, forced a uh, two degree of freedom system and this is another example for a two degree freedom system in which two rotors are attached in a shaft so this is a two rotor system so two rotor system are also an example for a two degree of freedom system in this system instead of giving a linear displacement we are giving angular displacement theta 1 and theta 2 for the rotors 1 uh, and for rotor 2 Uh, two degree freedom system will be having two equations of motion and which will be treated as a couple of or a, as a coupled differential equation the lowest of the two natural frequency is called the fundamental frequency or first modern frequency of system i have discussed in the previous slide that the two degree freedom system will be having two natural frequencies of which the lowest one is called fundamental frequency or first modern frequency if the system is vibrating in that frequency then the mode of vibration is called first mode of vibration of the uh, system you can see here figure which shows first mode of vibration of a longitudinal vibration system in which the mass mass red colored mass and blue colored mass are vibrating in the same or moving in the same direction a mode of vibration at the highest frequency of the two values one will be higher uh, one will be higher than the other the, if the system is vibrating in that uh, higher frequency then that mode of vibration is called second mode of vibration and the frequency is called second mode of frequency you can see here the figure of a electrical vibrating system vibrating in the second mode here the red and blue colored mass are uh, moving in the opposite direction you can see come and compare to the first mode the red and blue colored mass are vibrating are moving in the opposite direction and the main difference between these two figures is that uh, in the first the, the, the second mode this one will be uh, harmonic one and this is not that much harmonic this is another example for a uh, transverse vibration of a string this is actually the first mode of vibration of the uh, transverse vibration of the string and this is the second mode of vibration of the transverse vibration of the string in first mode you can see here uh, the particles are moving either towards up or towards down in a harmonic manner but in uh, second mode you can see some uh, some amount of particles or some or a, a particular section of the string is moving downwards and other section moving upwards and this is the nodal point which is not affected by the uh, uh, by the uh, transverse vibration you can see here so first and second mode of a string which is undergoing a transverse vibration now we will discuss a, a university question uh, it is asked during december 2018 kerala technology university examination figure shows a vibrating system having two degrees of freedom determine the two natural frequency of the vibration and the ratio of amplitude of the motion of mass m1 and m2 for the modes of vibration for the two modes of vibration mass m1 is equal to 1.5 kg m2 0.8 kg k1 and k2 are the stiffness of the springs and it is 40 newton per meter so first of all we will draw the free body diagram for the mass m1 and m2 we know that system is actually an undamped system and uh, it is a free body vibration it is a free vibration system we are initially giving a displacement x1 to mass m1 and then displacement x2 to mass m2 m2 and the system starts vibrating so first first we will draw the free body diagram for mass m1 you can see the mass m1 is subjected to two, two spring forces uh, one is 
the due to the spring uh, having stiffness k1 and other due to the spring having stiffness k2 you can see here this is spring forced uh, or spring force uh, uh, spring force on the mass by the spring having stiffness k1 you know the spring force is k into x uh, where k is the stiffness of the spring x is the deflection so for the first spring uh, k1 into x1 is the spring force k1 is the stiffness of the spring 1 and x1 is the deflection on the spring 1 due to the movement of the mass in the downward direction by value x1 so x1 is the deflection on the spring k1 so k1 x1 is a spring force now for the second spring you know that you can see that uh, the spring 2 is attached to both the mass m1 and m2 so it is affected by the displacement of mass m1 which is x1 and also the displacement of mass m2 which is x2 so the net deflection on the spring k2 is uh, x1 minus x2 so x1 minus x2 is actually the net deflection on the spring with respect to mass m1 so spring force is k2 into x1 minus x2 both the spring force are acting upwards because if you, ch if you check the first spring uh, the mass m1 is displaced downwards so the spring will try to pull it upwards that is why this spring force is upwards for the second spring the mass m1 is compressing the spring 2 so the spring will pull or push it or push the mass upwards that is why this force is upwards and we have also represented the inertia force of the mass m1 you can see here uh, the mass m1 is moving downwards so the inertia force will be moving Inertia force will be acting upwards. Inertia force is mass into acceleration. M1 into X1 double dot. X1 double dot is acceleration, inertial acceleration of the mass M1. Now, for now we have uh, written the equation of motion for the mass M1. You can see equation of motion for mass M1 is M1 X1 double dot plus K1 X1 plus K2 X1 minus X2. M1 X, we have written here the real bits principle that is a net force plus the inertia force equal to zero or net force and inertia force keep the system in dynamic equilibrium so the net force is the force due to the springs that is for the first spring k1 x1 second spring k2 into x1 minus x2 and the inertia force equal to zero now for the second mass m2 you can see here uh, the spring force acting on the mass m2 is the due to this is by the spring 2 Spring force is K2 into deflection of the spring 2. K2 into deflection of spring 2 is X2 minus X1 with respect to the mass M2. Because spring 2 is, is uh, stretched by the mass M2 and is compressed by the mass M1 by a value X1. So the net deflection of spring 2 we know that it is X2 minus X1. So uh, K2 into X2 minus X1 is the uh, spring force on the mass M2. We have taken x2 minus x1 because we are taking deflection with respect to mass m2 or the related deflection of the spring or the net deflection of the spring with respect to mass m2. So x2 minus x1 is a deflection of the spring k2 having difference k2 with, uh, with respect to mass m2. So k2 and x2 minus x1 is the spring force and also we are representing the inertia force. We know that inertia force of mass m2 will be upwards will be acting upwards because mass m2 is act, uh, moving downwards so the inertia force will be acting upwards inertia force is m2 x2 double dot so the equation of mass motion of the mass m2 is net force which is the spring force k2 into x2 minus x1 plus inertia force equal to zero hope you understand this how we have derived the equation of motion so uh, for deriving equation of motion we will be making use of the derived principle that is net force acting on the system plus inertia force equal to zero. That is only the principle we need to consider while deriving equation motion of a vibrating system. Now we will assume the displacement, initial displacement as a harmonic vibration and the equation for the initial displacement is x1 is equal to a1 sin omega nt and x2 as a2 sin omega nt. Just assuming it, okay, because we, for a harmonic motion we know that the equation or a displacement equation for harmonic motion we have uh, discussed these things much uh, earlier in the uh, previous audio lectures that is x is equal to a sin omega t is the equation for a harmonic vibration system or equation for displacement for a harmonic vibration system so assuming the displacement x1 which is act, which is applied on mass m1 as a1 into sin omega nt and the displacement x2 which is uh, applied on mass, a, a mass m2 as a2 sin omega nt 
we know acceleration will be getting by differentiating this equation twice so d square x1 by dt square that is x1 double dot is equal to minus a1 omega n square sin omega n t similarly acceleration of the mass m2 is d square x2 by dt square that is x2 double dot which is equal to minus a2 omega n square sin omega n t a1 and a2 actually represents the amplitude of vibration or the maximum displacement of vibration of mass m1 is a1 and maximum displacement of mass m2 is a2 that is amplitude of vibration of mass m1 and amplitude of vibration of mass m2 now substituting, substituting these values that is x1 double dot and x2 double dot and x1 and x2 in our equation a and d that is that is the equation of motion of mass m1 and equation of motion of mass m2 so substituting uh, x1 double dot in the equation of motion of mass m1 m1 x1 double dot plus k1 into x1 plus k2 into x2 minus sorry x1 minus x2 k2 into x1 minus x2 so you have substituted these values on the equation of motion of the mass m1 which you have discussed in the previous slide is equal to 0 similarly substituting the substituting this displacement and acceleration in the equation of motion of mass m2 m2 into x2 double dot plus k2 into x2 minus x1 equal to 0 that is our equation of motion for the mass m2 so we have substituted the expression for displacement and acceleration in this equation so we are taking this as equation c and this as equation d so uh, i will rearrange the equation c now uh, that is i will take uh, the terms uh, uh, the uh, term which contains k1 in a1 in common and also terms which contains a2 in common so equation c while I rearranging you will be getting like this this is equation c which you have derived which you have derived in the previous slide equation c i have taken the term which are have a1 as in common and the terms which are uh, where uh, which contains a2 as a2 so this is a1 in terms and a2 terms so a1 by a2 will be like this so this is what we will be getting from equation c so I am naming that equation as equation E. Similarly, from equation D, I am taking the terms which contains A1 and also the common uh, terms which contains A2 as in common. So this is that terms. And so from this equation also A1 by A2 is this. Okay. So rearranging equation D like this and naming it as equation F. So I have rearranged equation D and name it as equation F. So this is expression for A1 and by A2 from equation C and this is expression for A1 by A2 from equation D. Now I will, in uh, next slide I will compare these two equations, E and F I will compare. So I will compare now equation E and F. So this, this is what we have got from equation E that is A1 by A2 is K2 by minus M1 omega n square plus K1 plus K2 and uh, this is the term which we get from equation f that is minus m2 omega n square plus k2 by k2 is equal to a1 by a2 that is what we are getting from equation f so this is from equation e a1 by a2 and this is from equation f a1 by a2 so i am substituting values for k2 and k2 that is 40 and substituting values for m2 and m1 in this equation you will get this now in cross multiplying these equations you will get the equation like this so this is a uh, second degree equation the variable is omega n square so I will find the root of this equation g that is 1.2 omega n square whole square minus 1, 124 omega n square plus 1600 1, equal to 0 equation g I will find the roots of this equation there will be two roots so now we will find out the root of equation G. So this is the root of these are the roots of equation G. Uh, that is omega n1 square and omega n2 square. The value of omega n1 square is 88.219 and the value of omega n2 square is 15.11. Uh, so we find out omega n1, the omega n1 is root of 88.219 which is 9.39 radians per second and omega n2 is root of 15.11 which is 3.887 radians per second. And now can see here 3.887 radians per second is the least value among these two natural frequency so that frequency is what is called that is omega n2 which is 3.887 radians per second is the fundamental frequency vibration of this two degree freedom system 
or we can say it is the first model frequency of vibration of this 2D recorder system. And omega n1, that is the highest value, 9.39 radian per second, that is the second model frequency vibration of this uh, vibrating system. Now we will find out the ratio of amplitude vibration or amplitude ratio. That is, we need to find out A1 by A2. A1 actually represents amplitude of vibration of mass M1. A2 represents amplitude of vibration of mass M2. So for that, we need this relation A1 by A2 equal to K2 by minus M1 omega n square plus K1 plus K2, which is equation E. Or you can use equation F. Both gives amplitude ratio A1 by A2. So for finding uh, the amplitude ratio, first we will consider the fundamental frequency or first mode of frequency omega n equal to 3.887 radian per second so what is the amplitude ratio when omega n is 3.887 radians per second or what is the amplitude ratio when the system is vibrating in first mode of frequency so a1 by a2 is equal to uh, when substituting values for k2 k1 and omega n in this equation you will get amplitude ratio a1 by a2 as 0.6976 or a1 equal to 0.6976 a2 that is the relation we are getting when we substitute uh, 3.887 radius per second in that equation E. So this is uh, the amplitude ratio when this is vibrating in first mode of frequency. Now we will discuss about the mode shape, uh, mode shape of the system. So mode shape actually represents the displacement of the masses and the spring in that system. So mode shape is actually a displacement diagram. So this vertical line actually represents the zero displacement line or zero displacement line of the system. And I will be measuring the displacements in this di direction uh, uh, as I am showing the, uh, uh, the pointer. As I am showing using the pointer. So this is the direction I will be measuring the amplitude. So this is a, gra uh, this is a displacement diagram and displacement will be measured in the horizontal, horizontal direction or, or the direction in which the pointer is shown. So this point actually represents displacement of this uh, fixed, fixed link is not the fixed support uh, so this is the uh, displacement zero for this fixed support this uh, linear line represents the displacement of the spring and this magnitude a1 is the displacement or you can say maximum amplitude or maximum displacement that is amplitude of vibration of mass m1 so a1 is 0 0.69782 that we got from the relation similarly this uh, linear line represents the uh, uh, displacement of the spring and this amplitude A2 represents the amplitude of vibration of mass M2. So this is this mode shape is actually a displacement diagram of this 2D recorder system. So this is how the system will be displaced uh, when it is vibrating at its first mode of frequency. So this is how the system vibrates uh, in the first mode of frequency. A blue color represents mass M1 and red color represents mass M2. Both uh, blue color, that is both mass M1 and M2 are vibrating in the same direction or moving in the same direction when it is vibrating at its uh, uh, first model frequency. So this is the mode shape. Mode shape actually represents displacement of the uh, elements in that uh, system. Uh, so if A2 is 1, A1 will be 0.6976. So if A2 is the unit value, that is if A2 is 1, mm 1 meter 1 centimeter anything so a1 will be 0.6976 millimeter meter according to the uh, displacement so this actually represents uh, uh, gives us an idea about how system will be displaced uh, when it is vibrating at a frequency 3.887 radians per second we will find the mode amplitude ratio when omega n is 9.39 radians per second that is when omega n is second model that is system is vibrating in second model frequency we will find out a1 by a2 from the same equation that is equation e either you can use equation e or equation f both will give you the amplitude ratio so i am substituting value of omega n that is 9.39 in this equation you will get a1 by a2 as minus 0 0.765 there is a negative relation that is, that is ratio is negative so a1 is minus 0.765 so if a2 is 1 a1 will be minus 0.765 a2 is 1 then a1 is minus 0.765 that is a2 is representing the displacement of mass m2 a1 representing displacement of mass m1 
so negative sign means if mass m2 is moving in the one moving in one direction then mass m2 will be moving in the opposite direction that is what is represented by this relation so our mode shape will be like this this is actually displacement of this point fixed point zero uh, the spring deflection is represented by this linear line and a a1 is equal to 0 0.765 a2 that is deflection of mass m1 and from the relation we got a1 and a2 a1 by a2 is minus 0 0.765 that is if mass m1 is vibrating in one direction then mass of m2 will be vibrating in the opposite direction so that is why displacement diagram is crossing like this crossing like this so a1 is the displacement of mass m1 a2 is displacement of mass m1 if a2 is 1 unit value then a1 will be minus 0 0.76 so this value will be minus 0 0.76 if a2 is 1 that is what is we will be getting from the mode shape 2 so we understood that in mode shape 2 that is if the system is vibrating in 9.39 radians per second the vibration system will be like this as shown in the figure animated figure you can see both the systems are vibrating in opposite or both the masses are vibrating in opposite direction when blue is moving downwards then red is moving upwards okay so both are uh, vibrating in opposite directions or the velocity of the masses are in opposite direction okay so this is mode shape 2 that is when the system is vibrating in 9.39 radius per second this will be the uh, condition or this is the mode in which the system will be the vibrating understood so this is our these are called mode shapes so sometimes you will be asked to draw the mode shape also so this is how you will be drawing the mode shape depending upon the amplitude ratio you will be drawing the mode shapes so hope you understand the problem uh, such problems will be asked in the examinations from 2 degree freedom system that they will be asking for us to find out the natural frequency of 2 degree freedom system and also find out the amplitude ratio and the and draw the mode shapes the references for the uh, session is uh, mechanical vibrations by the pc and mechanical vibrations and industrial noise control by lizard energy hope you enjoyed the session Thank you.